Like many people growing up in San Pedro, I played organized sports. I played basketball, I played soccer, I played baseball. And I have just so much gratitude for those who made that possible, whether they were coaches or referees or team moms. There's so many people that help. One of the people that really stands out to me is a guy named Mel Bobich. Um, he realized that we needed a base, more baseball fields. And at Friendship Park at the time, there was I think maybe one baseball field, maybe not. But he and a bunch of guys went up there with wheelbarrows and shovels and literally without any city permission, took a city park and built a baseball field. And next thing you know, there's a baseball field and now they have a baseball league. And that's where I first started playing. And I played at Friendship when I was a kid. And my first year, I, I had a really, really good time playing there. Um, and um, did really well. I made the all-star team. My team won the championship. I pitched. Uh, I was the pitcher on the all-star team. So it was just a really great experience. Um, the next year, my family moved across town to where my parents still live in the Taper Avenue area, and the little league there was Eastview. Well, when I tried out for the Eastview team, I got on a team, and uh, everything that my coach saw in me at the Friendship Park League, the guy at East you didn't really see. So I went from the kid who was on the All-Star team, who was the starting pitcher, to the kid who sat on the bench for three innings and, and played for three. And I think he wouldn't have even played me for three, but you had to. And, and instead of playing pitcher, he you know, kind of stuck me in the outfield, kind of almost trying to hide me. And I just had a miserable year. And uh, we get to the last game of the year, and if we win the game, we're gonna make the playoffs and we have a chance at the championship. If we lose, we're out. Um, and we get to the last inning of this epic game that we have to win. There's runners on second and third. We're up by a run. And, um, and you know, all I'm thinking is if the ball's hit to me, get the ball back in, don't let the guy from second score because that's the game's over, we lose. Sure enough, Guy gets up, hits a single, it's rolling right toward me. Guy from third scores, game's tied, ball's still coming. I know that I have to make the, I have to just make a clean play, pick it up, throw it back, and we'll be okay and we're still in the game. I get down on one knee to make sure it doesn't roll through my legs, and at that last moment, the ball hits a rock, hops over my shoulder, rolls all the way to the fence. And by the time I retrieve the ball and get it back in, that guy from second scored very easily. We lose the game season over. It's the only time in my entire life from a little kid to an adult that I ever cried after a game. I was in that dugout sobbing completely uncontrollable. I could not stop crying. I was that frustrated from having such a terrible year and then feeling like I let my team down. And I kind of wanted to quit baseball, to be honest with you, because I just wasn't having fun. But ne the year, next year I came back and I said, I'll give it one more try. And, um, the year before, not only was I stuck out in the outfield, I couldn't hit a lick. I was just, maybe that's why he didn't think I was a good player. He just didn't seem like I had pretty good hand-eye coordination. I'm not really sure. But anyways, I couldn't hit a lick. And well, come to, ha come to find out, maybe the reason I couldn't hit a lick was because I couldn't see the ball. The next year I put glasses on and everything changed. Now, like I'm hitting the ball all over the park. The new coach sees that I'm a pretty scrappy kid and I can like, you know, I'm good at, fielding ground balls, I'll die for anything. So he puts me at third base. And I go from, you know, the kid who doesn't barely get into a game to playing third base, making the all-star team, and everything that, uh, you know, I didn't do the year before I was doing this year. And I, it, what was really gratifying for me was that one of the games, my coach from the year before, who didn't see anything in me, was the umpire. And I was like, I can't, I, I want to admit, I, I have to admit that I had a little bit of a chip on my shoulder. It was really neat to him, for me to show him, hey, look, here's the kid that you kind of missed on. But he was really cool and he really treated me well. So I think it was just like, I probably silent mentioned because I didn't do that well. But you know, the moral of the story is that you know you always try, you come back, you don't give up. And then, you know, cut to many years later. Now my kids are just about to enter into the age of playing sports, and the league that I played in, Eastview, has just been closed. And I found that a lot of people were ready to give up and just say, okay, well, the you know, the league's gone and that was a part of our history, and that that's that's just the way it is. Um, but the downside of that story is there's 550 kids that were not going to be able to play baseball because of this and would have to find another league. And quite frankly, there just weren't enough leagues to absorb all those kids. So this is a group of guys, my buddy Anthony Perosi being one of them, another buddy Dave Stanovich and Ron Golosic and Scott Lane and Tony Cordero, all these guys who are really good friends of mine, they really did what I think is a yeoman's job. They were their generation's Mel Bobich. They were the ones who made sure that Eastview was to find a place to play, and they did. And with the help of a then councilwoman Janice Hahn, um, Eastview was located at Knoll Hill, which is where it's at still to this day. And I got the opportunity as a dad to bring my son out 
and have him participate in the Eastview Little League for a couple years when he played. And so it's just, I, I have so much gratitude, not only for the ones who did it for, so that I could play, but also the ones who did it so that my son can play. And you know, it, it, you know, you know, it's just, it seems trivial to people who don't like sports, but for those of us who, who do love it, you know, it, it's been such a big part of our life and I'm so thankful to them for that. So Mel Bobich, thank you. And all you guys who saved Eastview, thank you. Thank you.